Hi, we are the Ohio Guys here in location in Los Angeles, California. I'm Christian Campo, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. I'm joined with William Knight. How are you doing, sir? Better than most, not as good as some. <laughs> good or, or, as I always say, I started out with nothing, and I still have most of it left, so I can't complain. <laughs> good answer. All right, so we've got a few questions for you. Uh, first of all, What's it like working in the industry today? Well, <clears throat> it's, um, as you know, this industry is very competitive. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog industry, and very competitive, and it's a, a business of survivors. If you can put up with all the crap and you can hang in there, at some point, if you have any talent, you may be successful, uh, but it's tough. Uh, <clears throat> I've been doing this for, you know, most of my life uh, so I'm, I'm one of the survivors and um, it, you know it, it's all so individual you can say it when you're just start, if I were starting out today I don't I have no idea what I would do uh, because I have sort of along the way just fallen in here and there and it kind of just happened uh, but uh, it's it's uh, it's a tough business really and uh, I, I it's not a business I would ever recommend anybody to go into let's put it that way uh, and uh, as I say, it's a business of survival. And uh, you, you have to, first of all, you have to know what you're doing. Well, it's like any other business. If you're a carpenter or a cabinet maker, you better be damn good at what you do if you're going to get a lot of work. And people recommend you and say, oh, yeah, that guy's really good. Uh, and it's pretty much, acting is pretty much like anything else. I mean, Harrison Ford started out as a carpenter. He, he, that was, I'd say he made his living in Hollywood before he started getting roles. And he did American Graffiti, and from there on out, the rest is history. And then Star Wars. Huh? But um, um, it's just keep working at what you do, and eventually, you, you know, you, people start hiring you, and then somebody else hires you, and that's kind of the way it is. And um, it's, you know, I enjoy it. I enjoy the business. Uh, it, <laughs> I always tell people, <clears throat> uh, I say, what's like in the, the acting game? Uh, you like what you do? I say, well, it beats shoveling shit. <laughs> I could be working in a factory somewhere, you know. I thank God that I'm able to do what I love doing, and uh, and uh, hopefully I do it well, and um, so uh, I keep doing it. And uh, I'm like a shark. Let's see, at my age, um, so many of my friends in competition have died off, or or they can't remember lines anymore, or they're, or whatever. Um, but I'm kind of like a shark. I I keep moving. You know, if a shark doesn't keep moving, they die. So that's me. I just keep moving. And uh, uh, whatever comes up, I just keep going. And uh, that's kind of the way, what you do. Uh, and uh, there's no magic formula. You just do it. I think I told you how I fell into doing anime. It was just an accident. I, uh, I'm an actor. I did Broadway, off-Broadway. I'm a stage actor, film actor, television actor. Uh, but I fell into doing anime by just accident, doing my printing up resumes at a uh, FedEx one night, at late at night, and a fellow sitting next to me does, uh, is an engineer, works in the, in the, working on animes, and he asked me if I had done any animes, I said no, but I'd done a lot of movies that I've done, and uh, he said, well, come by, tomorrow we're auditioning for this uh, animated film, I think that was El Hazar or something like that at that time, we were just looking back, and uh, I said, oh, okay, I went back, and of course, I, having done so much ADR on films, live action stuff of my own, reproducing my own voice because of noise in a film. I was able to do it, so I, did, I got the job and I did that, and one thing led to another, and, one, and finally Ghost in the Shell happened to come up, the feature film, the first one, and uh, I did that, and I got cast as Aramaka, and from then on it's just one thing led to another, and that's kind of the way the business works. They like what you do, they hire you again, and, uh, um, uh, and I'm pretty good with voices because I, I can do a lot of different accents and uh, nationalities and character voices, and, that helps, of course. Uh, and uh, other than that, I don't know. Just <laughs> uh, so. What's your favorite show that you have worked on? Oh boy, you talking about anime or or any any yeah. show? Oh boy, that's that's really tough because I I've done an awful lot of stuff. And uh, as I told you, the most iconic one that I worked on that everybody goes, oh, wow, you were on Star Trek? You know, I, 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 it's probably, it's not really so much that it's my favorite. It's just that one of, my, one of them that seems to elicit the most interest um, because there are so many Trekkies out there. And I mean, 
college professors, uh, kids, people that just love. I'm talking about the original Star Trek that I did. It was my first, my first uh, um, SAG uh, TV job, um, and um, it's an iconic show. So it's uh, it was in that respect is favorite. So um, and um, I suppose, and when it comes to anime, I suppose uh, Ghost in the Shell. Even though I've done, you know tons of anime, but I guess Ghost in the Shell, since we did so much of it, uh, it covered, uh, we did, uh, I did uh, the first feature, and then we did another, I think we did two other features uh, later on, and then we did 52 half-hour segments, uh, the Adult Swim stuff that was on forever, and, uh, and games, I did, uh, was it two or three PlayStation games uh, as Aramaki, the, uh, and then, uh, and we just, oh, as I told you, uh, We've been dormant. Uh, there's, we've done nothing with Ghost in the Shell for three or four years, I don't know, or at least. And then suddenly, a new producer came along and got the rights to do this video game. So there is a new Ghost in the Shell's game, which I just went in and recorded a, a, a several weeks ago. Uh, myself and uh, Richard Epcar, who plays uh, uh, Bozzo, and uh, the rest of the uh, original uh, Ghost in the Shell crew. It's a, it's a video game that I believe is going to be on... Uh, uh, it's an inter I mean, internet game. It's going to be on kind of like League of Legends, which I've also done. Um, and I don't have the final word on it, how it's going to, when it's coming to fruition, but anyway, it's coming. So that's the most recent uh, thing. So Ghost in the Shell has lasted, I mean, I, that's, that has been the most ongoing uh, one of all the uh, of all the other enemies. So many of the others, you were just showing me some of the things on that uh, a list of what was the name of it? The uh, uh, show behind the voice. Second yeah, yeah, behind the voice. And he showed me pictures of characters I don't, I, had, I didn't even recognize, because you do them and then you move on to the next and you you, you forget about them and uh, and it's uh, but uh, so yeah I you know as I say I I do what I love. There's a somebody said one time uh, if you do what you love doing uh, if you're and you're good at it you'll never work a day in your life. In other words, it's you know, Picasso was he'd go out to his studio and paint. He, when he was in his 80s, he'd go out and he was still painting because he loved doing it. You don't do it because it's your job. You do it because it's your, you know, you do it because you, you, you enjoy doing it. And that's kind of, uh, you know, what I, what I do. And uh, I'm just happy. I, 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 I thank God every night. I, I am pretty, fairly religious. I always thank my mom for giving me life and giving me long life. My mom lived to be 100. And uh, giving me good health and a long life, and I thank God for my good health. And I thank God that I'm able to do what I enjoy doing. I mean, uh, I could be out, as I say, you know, uh, <laughs> doing some awful work that I hated doing, you know, which uh, I wouldn't really want to do. But uh, I, I thank God that I'm able to do what I enjoy doing. And it's fun, and, um, and people get pleasure out of it. I, I just closed up, as I said, I just closed a place any night where I played God. And uh, I had a fellow... <laughs> It's Adam and Eve and Steve, and it's going to be, we're going to, we just recorded a cast album. It's a musical, beautiful music. And I do a song and dance, the first time I've ever done that, a, with a hat and cane with the devil. We do a, a shuffle off to Buffalo, a song and dance, and that was a lot of fun. And I play God, uh, who creates Adam and Eve. Steve was sort of like a, a curveball, but we didn't go into that. Uh, but I had a guy come up to me after the show one night, and he, I was talking to some people, and he came up to me, he said, I, I really want to shake your hand, and this is after the show. And I said, oh, sure, you know. And he said, this is as close as I'm ever going to get to God. <laughs> just, so, so it's fun playing God. Um, and several. And of course, I, it, it, again, as I was saying, I, I've also played some of the greatest generals ever. I played uh, General MacArthur, uh, General Eisenhower, General Patton. And uh, it's fun playing those historic characters. Um, so, um, yeah. And God, of course, how, how do you get any higher than that? <laughs> it's just, uh, uh, so, anyway. Okay. Since we really touched base on it, what was it like working on Ghost in the Shell? What's it like? What was it? What was it like working on it? What was it like? Well, as I said, you know, it's, it's different when you're doing uh, anime or any kind of ADR, which is additional dialogue replacement when we're doing film. When you're in, the, you're in a booth with a mic and you've got the screen there and you've got your, your picture, and uh, in, in this case, it's usually an anime, it's a Japanese. And you're hearing just the tone of the voice, but you don't, I don't understand Japanese. <laughs> Never. My hardest job in Ghost in the Shell, in any of the anime, is 
re-pronouncing the Japanese names, because they always keep the Japanese names. Since we're doing English, you think they change it to Johnson or Williams or Smith. Like we still keep the, uh, you know, uh, the, the Japanese names. Uh, and I always have, luckily, they usually have a Japanese person in the booth who corrects you. <laughs> So, and those are the only time I stumble and have to go back and do two or three takes when I've had to do two or three names in a row of um, referring to some Japanese character in the, in the script. Uh, but it, the, the thing about doing, uh, um, as I say, Ghost Jet or any other anime, it's just, you're just in there in a booth with you and the mic and the screen. And you seldom ever even meet the other characters because when you're watching it, you're meeting, they're all doing it, and you figure they're all together, but they're never together. They're just, each one comes in and does his portion of dialogue. You listen to the other person's dialogue, and it comes to you, and then you do yours. And the only time you ever meet the other actors is usually if you have a party at some point, or you uh, run into, or you work with them all. Like, well, Ghost and Shell, I met most of them because we'd done so many of them. We'd pass each other going in and out of the booth, uh, going to do our stuff, but you're never, seldom ever doing it together. So it's a little bit solitary, unlike doing a film or, or stage where you're all, the actors are all working together. Uh, so it is a kind of a solitary thing, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's different than any other form of, uh, of acting. Because uh, acting is a communal, theater and film is a communal thing, and it's, just, it's not a solitary thing. And when you're a painter, you sit just you in the canvas, you're painting, and that's it. But in acting and in theater, it's a communal thing, because it's a director, and it's you and the cast. And it, but in this, it's a little more like the solitary artist sitting in the booth doing the voice. Uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's the way it is. Uh, and so, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's fun, as I say. And you do it, uh, as I say, I originally never really knew that much about anime or even cared that much. I never, and even now, I, I really don't watch any of it unless it's something I'm in or I know or somebody says, oh, watch this. Because I... I just don't follow it. My son one time was watching, I said he was watching Akira or something. I, he said, Dad, did you, did you do it? And I said, yeah, I guess I did. I, and he, he recognized my voice, you know. But I don't watch them, and I forget. I do them, and I forget about them. And, and somebody says, oh, I saw you. I say, oh, really? I don't remember doing that, but I guess I did, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, it, it's just work. It's a job. And it's a job I enjoy doing. So, you know, what can I say? Uh, I don't make, a, I don't make a, 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 my whole life out of anime. Let's say this, I do theater, I do film, I do television, I do uh, commercials, I, I, you know, and uh, anime is just part of what I do, and uh, unlike my whole life. Uh, so, I'm an all-around actor, <laughs> voiceover actor, whatever. All right, no question. What's it like working on Naruto? Oh, Naruto, well, <laughs> the thing about Naruto is that I've been doing this for so long. I just did last week, I did another segment, and I was looking at the, at the we have these books, you know, with the lines in them, and, and they're all numbered, and then you, you do them. And I'm, I did two segments, and it was 500, and I can't remember, we did this is how long this show's been going. I said, I can't believe it, 567 and 68, something like that. It was like, I know it's way, way up there. I said, I can't, this show's been going that long? And I've been killed so many times. I played Donzo. This is what the thing over his eye. He's kind of a mean character. He's kind of, uh, you know. But he's been killed so many times. And I always think, oh, well, this is the last for my character. I'm, I'll never work on this show again. Sure enough, a month later, I get a call. <laughs> I've been resurrected. And I don't know. <clears throat> I know I've died two or three times, or at least I thought I did. But somehow I keep coming back. So that's the great thing about that. It's that job's still there. I keep keep eking out a few more uh, uh, paychecks out of it. <laughs> so that's about, I look at it as paychecks really, you know, it's, it's um, as I say, it's, uh, it's a living, you know. Yeah. All right then, another question. If you could be any character you have played, who would you be and you could mix and match? Ooh, that is so tough because uh, I have played so many characters. I. And some of them great and great characters like God, and others like I played uh, Cardinal Molieri, the chief of the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, a terrible, mean, oh, you know about the Spanish Inquisition. It's a terrible time in Christianity when we burn priests at the stake for being heretics and stuff. And uh, Cardinal Molieri was a very powerful guy. And uh, 
that would be a you know character. But it's, again, it's, it's 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 he's a very powerful character, and I've played a lot of powerful guys. I don't know, you know, I I. I is a compilation. Well, General Patton, of course. I played General Patton in a motivational video for Lockheed, and um, that was it's a great character. Um, um, I mean, I like command characters. I, 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 it falls easy to me. Having, as I told you, having been an enlisted man, I was in the Air Force for four years. I joined at 17. I hadn't even finished high school. I ran off and finished high school in the Air Force, and I was an enl lowly enlisted, a private, you know. And, but. In film and on stage, I, the, the lowest I've ever played is a captain. And usually I played colonels and I played generals and admirals and all those guys. So fun, powerful characters. And it's always much more fun to be a powerful character than a lowly character. And like in Ghost in the Shell, I play Aramaki, the chief of the, the cyber police. You know, he's like, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy that character. And uh, yeah, the, the, the in charge, you know, I, it's a compilation. Uh, of uh, characters. I'm playing a senator right now in a thing called, uh, uh, what's it called? Oh boy, it's, a, it's an internet um, webisode. Uh, it's a, a, what's it called? The, I'm playing a general in another one called the sit room, the situation room, which uh, you know CNN has a thing, it, which the president has in the office. Of, uh, he has like his advisors, and, like the secretary of defense, and I played this general, this this crazy old four-star general who advises the president. It's a comedy. It's called The Sit Room. It's a lot of fun. And uh, we've only done a couple of segments of that. And I'm trying to think of this other one where I play the senator, this corrupt senator. He's one of those wheeler dealers. Um, and, oh, another one I forgot to tell you about. It's another film. It's still been, it's been in post-production for over a year. And I, I play another senator who uh, kind of, you know, Anyway, that's kind of my life. It, 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 it's a compilation. It's kind of, I play authority figures. I play, you know, those kind of guys. And uh, I played a pretty good compilation. We talk about mixing and matching. Uh, you know, General MacArthur, General Eisenhower, General Patton, Aramaki, <laughs> uh, God. So, um, yeah, it's, um, yeah. I seldom ever play just a, you know, a regular guy. Uh, just, I don't know, just my... What can I say? Priests. I told you I play a lot of priests, uh, and um, so I don't know. What... No question. What was it like working on the big debate? Oh, the big debate. Well, that was fun. I I was the. Um, we had a series, and we we were doing. Oh, we did about two or three shows. We these were two and a half to three minute debates with famous comedians and and. Um, um, Mostly comedians. Uh, this girl Whitney, you know, she had her own show on NBC. Whitney, she's very funny. She was one of the main ones. And uh, we would have, we'd get two people and we'd pick a subject, and they would um, uh, argue. And I, w I was the um, what they call a moderator in a debate. Sort of, the, I was the Walter Cronkite character who sort of ran it and say, "Today's big debate." And I'd say, I'd say what the subject was, like the, the one you saw. Uh, who was the best, uh, Madonna or Mariah? Who was the queen of the singers, you know? And when we say, oh, Mariah was the best, they would say, oh, Madonna did so and so, you know, they, 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 and that was the comedy. The humor was that they would come up on their own. They would get, come up with a lot of great stuff, and some of it was written for them, but they would debate. And I'd say, you know, you know, uh, Tony, uh, and I'd throw it back and forth, and they'd debate, and it, it was fun. I showed you a copy of that. One of my favorites was, uh, uh, I would set it up with, uh, Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan, Lindsay has three, Paris has two, Nicole has one. Of course, we're talking about DUIs. And they say, should these celebrities be allowed to drive themselves, you know, or should they have chauffeurs? And then we have the debate. The two commissioners, they would say, well, they should be able to, they would say, no, they shouldn't drive. They should, they should have to have somebody drive them because they, they're inc too incompetent to drive. <laughs> and so things like that, it was silly stuff. It was a pop, pop culture. It was a pop culture show. Internet uh, show, big debate. Um, that was fun, and um, as I say, I, I really enjoy. The reason why I enjoy comedy, I played so many serious characters. That they're okay, but comedy is good because if you make people laugh, when people are laughing, they're feeling good, and there's nothing, there's nothing nice. Like the show I just finished, we we would get so many laughs. This one I closed Sunday night to play, and. We would get standing ovations and, and people laughing all the way through it. And it's such a great feeling as a performer to be doing something and saying things that people are just falling on, in the, out of their seats laughing about. 
it's an immediate response you get, so it's kind of fun doing comedy. The, the closest I can get is having played so many command characters. There's a great actor, Leslie Nielsen, who's dead, dead now. He did this Naked Gun. Have you ever saw those Naked Gun pictures? Or did you ever see the airplane? The one where they're saying, did you ever see a grown man naked? You know, with Peter Graves, who was on Mission Impossible, is playing comedy. And all these serious guys are doing it. was called Airplane. It's a wonderful classic. They'll get a chance to see it. Um, so um, Leslie Nielsen, all his life, played the command. He was, they did a, a, a movie called The Poseidon Adventure. It was a ship sank, and it was a very famous, uh, and he was the captain of the ship, the captain of the Poseidon. And he always played those characters, those command characters. But then in later life, he loved doing, he did the airplane, and then after that, they did a thing called Naked Gun, in which he played this kind of detective. And, and he would just, he had such a ball in his later life, he's passed on now, doing comedy, because he'd been doing all that serious stuff all his life. And the comedy was, um, there's, <laughs> there's a great scene, one of my favorite scenes that he did in uh, Naked Gun with Ricardo Montalban and Priscilla Presley, uh, where she's in, going in the office and she's climbing up this, you know, in these libraries, they have those rolling ladders and you cr climb up to pick a book up. He's standing there and she goes up to pick out a book and he's looking up and he says, nice beaver. And she comes down with a, <laughs> with a stuffed beaver. <laughs> he says, she says, yes, I just had it stuffed. And so now that, to me, that was one of the all-time funniest sight gags in a movie. The guy's sitting there, nice beaver, and she comes down with the stuffed beaver. It, it just, I mean, that's the kind of stuff. Leslie Nielsen was uh, so good. I mean, I say he was really great. I happen to love him. And uh, he's gone now. All these, so many great people that I grew up with are all, all gone now. So uh, it's only those of us who remember around to kind of like pass on the word and try to do some of that stuff ourselves. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I love comedy. So is there anything else coming out that you can talk about or anything you want to plug in at this uh, time? Well, as I said, the, uh, uh, the thing anime-wise that's coming out, or well, game-wise, it's because sort of, I guess the same people that are into anime are into games, right? It's, it's, uh, this is the Ghost in the Shell game that's going to be an internet game uh, like uh, League of Legends. And I play, as I tell you, I'm trying to remember the name of the character. He's a shopkeeper. He's something shopkeeper. I, I sell all kinds of stuff to people, uh, you know, crazy stuff. He's kind of a con man on League of Legends. Anyway, this is going to be like that. It's going to be an internet game, um, uh, as opposed to the kind where you buy the game and put it, or whatever, you know. Um, and the other is well, a, a feature film coming out called Waffle Street uh, with Danny Glover and James Leffert and myself. A really funny, uh, well, it's not an out-and-out -out comedy, it's, it is, but my, my role is funny. Uh, Waffle Street, uh, you get a great film out now called Dragon Dragon Day, which is a science fiction picture about the. It's not really that. It's kind of almost believable. It's not far out science fiction. It's about us being attacked by the Chinese uh, with a with an electromagnetic pulse, and everything goes out, and uh, all the cars can't run because of the computers, and we're down, and the Chinese come in and take over the country. It's a really good film, Dragon Day. It's out on DVD and uh, Blu-ray and. Uh, it, it, it may be on Netflix now, I'm not sure, but maybe. Anyway, it's a good film. Uh, it's out there now. And uh, another one called, what is it, A Beautiful Place. That one's, that one's in post-production. Oh, another one called The Shekels that I just finished. I'm not sure that's going to be the finishing title. That's the, the, the main character, the family called The Shekels. Uh, I just finished that a few weeks ago, and I'm not sure what that's. But anyway, that's... and. Um, Narado keeps going. I do that every couple of weeks. That, that's an ongoing Donzo, that my character. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 it's hard to keep track of all this stuff. I get, you know, there's a little bit here, a little there. The what? Giants. Oh, Giants. Yeah, that's, um, uh, I'm working on, I'm doing what they call a scratch track. Scratch track is not your final when it goes into the theater, you know, when they get more, hire Morgan Freeman to do it instead of me or whatever. Uh, they always go for big names. Most of us voice actors, we do all the, we do it so much better than most of them, but they always want a big name to sell tickets. So uh, uh, this is a story based on Jack and the Beanstalk, and it's called, you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, pants a plane, and there's a big giant and he, up in the, the, the beanstalk. Uh, it's based on Jack and the, but it's really expanded way beyond Jack and the, uh, but it's based on Jack and the Beanstalk. The main character is Jack, and it's called Giants. And uh, at least that's what it tentatively is being called now. And it's a work at Disney in progress uh, that their uh, animators and the, story, the writers uh, 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 and the uh, directors are working on now. And I go in every couple of weeks and do some voice. I lay down what they call a scratch track. They, they do the dialogue. I play the, the fairy godfather who's the narrator. 
you think he's the narrator. He's talking about this boy, Jack, who was a poor boy, had about his self-esteem. And, and uh, uh, Christopher Columbus, and it takes place in Spain, back when Christopher Columbus was uh, going over. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember the... Anyway, Jack is feeling depressed, and he's on the bridge, and the narrator says, comes up and says, Jack. And uh, he's kind of saves like He's thinking of maybe jumping off there. And he says, oh, what are you, my guardian angel? He says, no, Jack, I'm your fairy godfather. So the narrator is the fairy godfather. It's Disney, you know, Disney with the fairy godmother and Cinderella. Anyway, the narrator is the fairy godfather. And that's the voice. That's the thing I'm voicing right now at Disney. But uh, as I say, this is a work in progress. They're working on animating it. They do a little, I do a little voice. They can do a little animation. It, I was going to say, the difference in Disney and that sort of, that kind of animation, they animate to your voice. You do the voice, like, because uh, most of these stars who come in, they just come in and do it. They couldn't anim- they couldn't lip sync anyway, most of them. Uh, then they just animate to the to the voice. And uh, that's what they do in, on this. Whereas in a- anime, you have to do the lip sync. You have to animate. You have to speak to the picture that's already there. You're just replacing the Japanese dialogue with the English. But yeah, this Giants might, that might turn out to be a really nice uh, feature, uh, Disney feature sometime in the future. And uh, as I say, you, in this business, you never count your eggs before they hatch. But right now I'm working, it's, it's a job and I'm working on it. And we'll see how it comes. If they get a big star to play Jack and his love interest, uh, they, who knows, I might, I might be able to continue to play the Gary Guy Fairy Godfather. If not, they might hire Morgan Freeman or somebody to play them, but we'll see. Anyway. Uh, that's all I can think of right off the top of my head right now. Last question, and we ask this to all the voice actors. Any Facebook, Twitter, or any other social media for the fans to get a hold of you? Yeah, well, you can easily find me on Facebook. Uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of funny things that there's, because of my name, there's a lot of William Knights out there. My grandson is on as Bill Knight. He's a cop. My grandson is a, is a cop in Pomona, and he's, he's really a great kid. Anyway, he's Bill Knight, and then there's some other William Knights that are now. I'm William Knight, the actor. I don't know how else well, you. Uh, I don't even know my. You, there's number. You have a. There's. But I, I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you. Just. I'm on Facebook, William Knight, and uh, you can look me up. I don't have a fan page. Everybody says, oh, you should have a fan page. I, see, I don't know enough about. You know, I, I'm not on Twitter. I've never gotten into that. I'm very bad with computers, and so I. Uh, 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 you can find me on IMDb. Oh, there's also, they've got me listed on IMDb. I've got a, I've never been able to straighten that out. It's William Knight 3, William Knight 10, William Knight 12. It's all me. I'm the only William Knight in SAG, SAG-AFTRA. So mostly they're all me, but they're spread around on IMDb, the Internet Movie Database. And uh, I'm in Wikipedia. And uh, But I don't tweet. Uh, I just never have gotten into that. Uh, it's too much work. The guy says, oh, I just went out and went to Bob's and had, had the lunch today. No, I said, oh, I went out and saw, <laughs> saw uh, 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 Matt from Uncle tonight. No, okay. Who cares? You know, I mean, I, uh, I got more important things in my life than to sit down and tell everybody what I'm doing, you know. Uh, so I'm not into tweeting, and I, maybe I should, everybody says you should get into it, and probably I should, but uh, I just, uh, Facebook is about all I can handle. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, and uh, and I, uh, uh, I I'm really my email is really easy. I actually have two emails. The one I gave you, uh, my my Apple email is real easy. It's just William Knight One at me dot com. I'm just so that's the easiest one. It's easy to remember. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know what else uh, what else to say, uh, except uh, I, huh. Well, I want to thank you for joining us for the interview. So I appreciate okay. it for your time. Well, it's, not, it's nice meeting you. So we just, we just met and we just had uh, lunch and, uh, well, actually I had breakfast. Cause I, uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, well, it's nice. And it's nice to know you guys are out there. And uh, as I said, I didn't know you guys are all out there, really. Uh, uh, and little by little, I meet people. I told you the story about the guy at a New Year's Eve party where he comes up to me and says, uh, I hadn't even spoke to him all night. And he comes and says, you did Ghost in the Shell. And I said, yeah, how did you know it? He said, I recognize your voice. This was in a crowd. So there are a lot of uh, people out there. And I thank God for you guys. That's how we make our living. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we want to thank you for joining us for another edition of the Ohio Guys. I'm Christian. And I'm William Knight. <laughs> and we'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.